living as a christian is a lifestyle more than a religion you know in the bible we read in the book of acts the way those people lived their lives i mean they were persecuting them they were troubling them they were throwing them in the prison but the life these guys lived they were so bold in the face of challenges they were so confident they were in fact comfortable living that way right they were so comfortable that people looked at them and say these are guys we should call them something they said christians in the sense they lived like jesus lived i mean that's exactly how jesus lived right when somebody came to him and said you know what we don't have enough food for 5000 people jesus didn't panic jesus didn't cry jesus didn't you know throw a fit at his team saying you 12 disciples you are supposed to you know protect my name look at how we have brought my name down look at how irresponsible you are you know you have you have defamed me you have shamed me he didn't say all of that he just took whatever was there he just multiplied it he just fed the uh, people who were there he was not troubled when the storm was raging he was not troubled when people were accusing him he was he was not troubled when people called him all sorts of names they told him you are an illegitimate child he didn't care and following in this footsteps now there is this group of people who are living that kind of life and they call them christians and what a privilege it is for you and me to be called that way many people think it is a religion but for you and me it's not a religion it's a way we will live life it's a way we will do life we may have nothing in our pocket we may no no one to help us we may have nothing going right but you know we will wake up in the morning we will come to a good friday service not to mourn but to celebrate <laughs> amen not to cry out loud but to celebrate saying there is power in the name of jesus right we won't be shaken by the news that happens around us by the reports of the uh, by the reports of the financial institutions we won't be troubled by all of that we will still hope saying i may fall down but i will rise up again I may have nothing going my way but one day I will have everything going my way and I'm not going to stop praising him I'm not going to stop hoping I'm not going to stop living I'm not going to stop eating I'm not going to stop celebrating because nothing is going my way I will be the same when I was on the mountain top I will be the same when I'm in the valley I'll be the same when I'm running I'll be the same when I'm tired because i'm a christian right because it's a lifestyle it is not a religion i follow so be proud to be called a christian and you know in those days we used to have good friday service one person came to me and then he gave a suggestion like this you know what pastor we should put a cross here and everybody should carry a pebble in their hand and as you are singing uh, you know are the cross are the cross i mean, do you remember that song na 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 ta ra ta 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 ra ra we should the choir should be singing that song and everybody should come and lay their burdens at the cross at the feet of the cross and you know just pour it down you need to create that time and as you were saying that you know people around us just had a smirk because they didn't understand it's not we more it's not i mean i'm not asking you not to mourn grieve right it's not about mourning the death of jesus christ it's about celebrating the death of jesus christ it's about understanding you know somebody asked me oh, don't you feel sad that jesus died i said no i'm happy You know why? Because of the death of Jesus, I have a reason to live again. Amen. I can live. I can live a good life, confident life, bold life, a life filled with hope, anticipation, expectations. I can do it all over again. I will do it day in and day out, again and again and again because of Jesus Christ. Amen. and celebrating the death of Jesus as us living the way God wants us to live because of the cross you understand that 
when i say lord make me holy you know what i'm saying again you know what i'm declaring the cross is not enough make me holy again die one more time so i can be more holy but when i stand up and say thank you lord i am the best version of holiness in this world you know what i'm saying again what i'm declaring the cross has done it all for me when i'm saying lord wash me clean you know what i'm saying jesus get on to the cross again you know shed your blood again but when you say i am pure i am perfect i'm sanctified i'm cleansed i am holy that means you know what i'm doing i'm living the effective life that cross has accomplished for me do you understand that so that's why you know we never ask for forgiveness when you uh, to god when you do something wrong if i do something you know against renuka if if the holy spirit inspires me i'll go and say renuma sorry i did this against you i spoke this against you i gossiped against you i did some nakara against you <laughs> right but god when i go to god you know how i will go god you know who i am i did all the nakara I gossiped against Renuka. I said bad things about Renuka. She was so good to me, but I did all of that. But I'm coming to you as your son. I won't hide myself like Adam. I won't hide myself like Eve saying, "You know, I made I did something wrong. I am bad. Please accept me." I won't beg before God. I will ask forgiveness to Renuka. I would reconcile I will set things right with Renuka but when it comes to God and me I have nothing to do from my side to make things right again do you understand that because Jesus has done it for me you when you fall when you fail when you slip down you know what you are supposed to do not hide get up step out and say I am a child of God that means i am living the effective sacrifice of jesus christ i'm living in the power or, or the efficacy of the sacrifice of jesus you understand so if anyone is making you feel guilty about your relationship and god tell them come talk to my pastor he'll fix you <laughs> if they ask you how dare you can call him how dare you can call him abba father he said because my pastor told me if they come and ask me i'll tell them you know what the holy spirit inside me reveal that as a revelation to me that's why i'm living a confident life amen okay let's get into the word i'm going to share a few revelations on uh, what it is the significance and the power of the sacrifice of jesus turn with me to second corinthians chapter 3 verse 12 onwards second corinthians chapter 3 verse 12 onwards therefore since we have such a hope we are very bold we are not like moses who would put a veil over his face to prevent the israelites from seeing the end of what was passing by but their minds were made dull for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read it has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away even to this day when moses is read a veil covers their hearts but whenever anyone turns to the lord the veil is taken away now the lord is a spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom and now i'm going to talk to you listen to this and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the lord who is a spirit you know paul when he writes to the church he is not like isaiah who write, who wrote about what jesus is going to do when paul is writing to the church he is writing about what the cross has accomplished for you and me when isaiah wrote 
53 you know in Isaiah 53 he was writing about what Jesus is going to go through so you can be but when Paul is writing he is throwing light into who you are now because what Jesus has went through amen and one of that revelation is this it says and we all who with unveiled faces who are you now because of the sacrifice of Jesus you all have what do you have what are you now you are a person with an unveiled face turn to the person next to you and tell them i am a person who's having an unveiled face is it too much to say okay then let's make it easy unveiled face an unveiled face an unveiled face amen so understand this you and i have an unveiled face now what the cross has done it has given us an unveiled face let me explain this to you what it is to be unveiled okay during the uh, tabernacle when they set up this tabernacle in the wilderness there was the outer sanctuary then the sanctuary the holy place and the most holy place and the between the holy place and the most holy place there was a big veil and nobody can enter amen nobody can enter except the high priest that to once in a year they cannot go uh, even the high priest he cannot go into the most holy place whenever he wanted to there was a specific time there was a specific you know ritual to follow after which he can enter that most holy place once and what stood between the holy place and the most holy place is his way and it's in the most holy place he goes the high priest goes and atones for the sins of all the israelites he will atone when once a year and then he will come back then next year again he will do he will repeat again then he will come back again what happens to the rest 364 days i'm a sinner i have sinned if it doesn't rain you know if if the uh, monsoon doesn't come then they will have this investigation what did pavitra do <laughs> what did mridula do what did vincent do there was always this investigation that was happening so on that particular day again the high priest will go you know with what will he go with with the offering with the sacrifice with the sin offering with the atonement what toning sacrifice he will go again and then he will come back again so it happened just once in a year so in another word the access to the most holy place was limited what is that the access to the most holy place is limited i'm explaining the unveiled face so you need to listen to this okay what is the significance of having an unveiled face is what i'm trying to you know bring it to your uh, understanding so the access to the most holy place is limited access very limited access and that too for the high priest so now come to the new testament jesus in matthew we read like this he lifted up his voice and shouted saying into your hands i give my spirit and then he laid his head down and gave up his ghost did he do that how did jesus die he was hanging out there he cried out saying into your hands i commit my spirit he laid his head down and gave up his ghost we read like this you know at that time there was something significant that happened there in the, he was dying outside right he was dying in the wilderness he didn't die in the temple he was dying in the wilderness he was a sacrificial lamb dying in the wilderness at that time we the history says it's written in the bible it says the veil tore from top to bottom 
so it is a veil that kept man from accessing god's goodness god's voice god's wisdom god's counsel god's power god's strength god's help god's health god's wealth but now because jesus died what happened the veil tore the veil tore you know what is the significance of that now every limitation that is upon you has been done away with amen you and i cannot be living a limited life in another word you can never be limited by human power human efficiency in this world i will prove i'll give you some examples of how to live a limitless life okay there were people who lived those limitless life in this world let's start with abraham you know what is what was abraham's limitation age right he was limited by age but when he was beyond the age he gave birth right sarah gave birth abraham and sarah had a baby when they are supposed to be limited by age they broke the barriers of age limitation and they had a child does it make sense they broke the barrier of age limitation and they had a child this is what i'm saying when you and i are declared to be as one who has an unveiled face that means there is nothing there is no power in this world that can limit you does it make sense this powerful you cannot be limited see this is how god originally intended man to live not limited by the human failure not you limited by human fall not human limited by the circumstances not limited by weather not limited by climatic conditions not limited by anything a limitless life look at jacob let's come to jacob jacob was a liar a cheater a deceiver he is a trickster but what god does to him he is calling him out saying jacob this is what you are believing you have put a limitations upon yourself saying you know this is who i am this is how i will be this is how i can live but god changes his name saying you will you shall be called a prince of god and then he raises up a nation after jacob a trickster raising up to raising up a nation do you think he was limited limitless come to david a shepherd boy what was he when he finished his life limited by his profession shepherd boy he just knew how to take care of sheep in the wilderness right he just knew how to run behind a sheep that was lost you know leave the 99 to go and look out for the one that was going astray that's what he knew but look at where david ended his life he was never limited by his profession he was a successful king the most successful king in the world a shepherd boy becoming a king look at joseph limited by the jealousy of brothers but where did he end in the palace now look at you do you think you can be limited if the bible says you are a person with an unveiled face what does that mean there is no power that can limit you in this world amen turn to the person next to you and tell them i'm limitless now tell them you are limitless you can never be limited by anyone and anything anymore amen today in the name of jesus christ i am declaring this over you you will live and limitless unlimited you know you cannot be apprehended by any powers in this world if you are sinning with any sickness that sickness is not going to limit you anymore 
Amen. If you are sitting here with any need, that need is not going to limit you anymore from living the best of you. Amen. That's the power of the cross. It has given you a new identity, a person with an unveiled face. That means just like how the veil tore and made and gave you a limitless access to the most holy place. You and I are called to live an unlimited, limitless life. You will have all the AIs coming in, right? The chat GPT now? Yeah, they are all coming in. You think they can limit you? And people are saying, you know, the, the other day I was just talking to someone. Uh, he was saying, you know, recession is it. You know, if anyone is laid off now, you know, what's the best thing to do? You'll have to upskill and you'll have to upskill in the area of AI. I'm declaring this over you. Anyone, everyone sitting here, you will not be limited by AI, whether you're upskilled to AI or learn chat GPT. No, nothing is going to limit you. Joseph didn't know how to run a kingdom. He became the prime minister. <laughs> he didn't run for politics. He became the prime minister. No quality education, no qualification. He didn't know how to do politics. One night he was in the prison. Next morning he was in the Okay, I'll put it this way. One night, he was sleeping in the prison floor. Next night, he was sleeping in the best of the bed available in Egypt. And 10 servants around him. Sir, this pillow is okay. This blanket is okay. Do you want water by your bedside? Do you want pomegranates? Do you want grapes? Do you want milk? Almond milk or turmeric milk? An unveiled face person cannot be limited by the happenings of life. I'm telling you, start believing this about you. If Paul wrote this, now you who have an unveiled face. Does this make sense? What cross has done for you is this. Taken away all limitations. See, when I'm saying... All God took away the limitations. That doesn't mean nothing is going to happen. You know, wherever you go, the Red Sea will part. No, I'm not saying that, you know. Wherever you go, you know, you'll find Jericho falling. I'm not saying that. Even Jericho stands in front of you. He will still march around saying, it will fall when I shout. That's living a limit, limitless life. Nothing will stop you from living. Nothing will stop you from hoping. Nothing will stop you from expecting. Nothing will stop you from rejoicing. Nothing will stop you from having your meal, sleeping. Some people, when things don't go their way, what happens to them? Their appetite goes away. When things don't go their way, their appetite goes away. Their sleep goes away. The beauty in their face goes away. They get dark circles. They become jittery. You know, how are you, brother? Are they young? Why do you want to know that? They, they, the beauty of their face just drains down. You know, why? Things don't go their way. That's not a person with an unveiled face. A person with an unveiled face, you know. When there was Red Sea, you will stand in front of the Red Sea. All you may have in your hand is just a small rod. Okay, you may not even have a rod like Moses because nowadays instead of rods, we carry our cell phones, right? But I'll tell you something. The rod that we carry is this, my hope in the inside. My confidence in who my God is in the inside. That is a rod that I carry. I will go stand in front of the Red Sea. Oh, Red Sea, you're trying to stop me. You know what? I'm a person with an unveiled face. You stand no chance against me. From stopping me, not from crossing, from living. I will live. You try stopping me how much ever you want. I will keep living. I'll, keep, I'll still keep rejoicing. I'll still keep hoping. I'll still keep believing. I'll still keep dancing. I will still keep celebrating life. Why? No unveiled face. That means you are limitless. Okay. What is another... Uh, significance of having an unveiled face 
ओके नाउ व्हाट हैपेंड नाउ ओनली द हाई प्रीस्ट गुड गो वंस अ ईयर हाउ मेनी टाइम्स दे कैन गो वंस अ ईयर दैट टू विद फियर एंड ट्रेम्बलिंग ही हैड टू फर्स्ट गिव अ सैक्रिफाइस sacrifices for his sins okay for his sin before he could go and give sacrifices for the sins of the people he has to make a offering for himself you know to clarify to sanctify him purify him so he can be qualified to go but look at what we read in uh, it's beautifully written in hebrews chapter 10 you can go home and read it says now a way to the most holy place is made available through the veil amen which is now see when the veil is not broken you cannot go through the veil right now what do we what do we read now the veil tore and made way that means i find a way through the veil which is the flesh of jesus right now the bible says come boldly how should we come that means you have access to all of god's goodness aren't you excited the significance of an unveiled face is this. you have access to all of god's goodness you can access it any time that you need it what's the goodness that you need now mrithula what's the goodness of god you want to see you have access to that amen renika the goodness you want to see happen in your life that only god can you have access to that jotsna the goodness of god that you want to see you know what you are not limited anymore you have access to that you have access to that he saying come boldly come boldly they they couldn't go boldly they couldn't step in boldly they were always filled with fear what if i die even the high priest even when he was going it we if we uh, the if you read the bible uh, i mean if you read the uh, history apparently there will be a belt tied to the end of their rope and there will be a rope tied to them so it is like you know they will let him go if the bell stops ringing that means he died in there and they'll have to pull him out <laughs> uh, sacrifice gone atonement gone everything gone over <laughs> no forgiveness nothing but now it says come boldly because why you have an unveiled face you can go any time middle of the night you woke up with a bad dream you can go into the throne room of grace and say god i had a bad dream if this dream is going to happen in my life i put a stop to it right now you get it you have a nightmare you can go boldly to the throne room of grace god i had a nightmare sorry it it really scared me i put a stop to it that's a kind of access you have access for everything i don't know one of you is waking up with cold sweat every night i don't know who it is right today is a day of deliverance you will not have those cold sweats again I don't know who it is. You just wake up with cold sweat, wondering what's going to happen to me, how my future is going to be. Today is the end of it. You will not wake up from your sleep in fear, but boldly. Amen. See, access granted for all of God's goodness, unveiled face. That is who you are. God is establishing you, a limitless. access granted person that is unveiled face isn't it beautiful so today hashtag what's the hashtag for today <laughs> unveiled face hashtag limitless hashtag access granted isn't it beautiful what how beautiful god is fashioning and you know beautifying your life 
He's saying, come, 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 make use of this privileges that I'm giving you. Okay, let me dig deeper a little bit more. Okay, probably another 15 minutes. Can I go? Let me share a little bit more about this unveiled face. Okay, what it is to have an unveiled face. Okay, uh, that's what I want to talk about. Where does this work? Unveiling, where does it happen? Or how do I live this unveiled life? Now I, I've taught you, you know, unveiled face means no limitations and access. Or I will put it this way, limitless access. Access with low limitations. It's like this a diamond merchant, you know, opening the doors of his shop and then saying, you can come take whatever you want. I'm not going to stop you. It's like, who's, uh, who's Apple now? Who's the CEO of Apple? Uh -huh. He coming, he's sending you a mail. Please, you can go to any Apple store all over the world and take whatever you want, how many times you want. If it, even if you have a small scratch, you throw it wherever it is, you take new one. Don't you think that will be you know, an exciting thing for you. That's what God is telling you. Access with low limitations. The things only God can do, He's saying, I will do it for you. No, no limitations over you. Okay. Now let's get back to where does this unveil how does this unveiling function? Okay. So if you read the previous passage of scripture. What happened there is, Moses goes up to the mountain. In Exodus we read, Moses goes up to the mountain and then when he comes down, people see that his face is shining. His face is having a different radiance. He doesn't look like a human being now. He looks like God. He looks, he's, he's different. It's like he, they put the best of the makeup on <laughs> the best makeup artist from heaven came down and put nice makeup and sent him. He was different. The glory of the Lord was on his face. Okay. And when he came down, he put a veil. People got scared. People freaked. Oh, Moses, you're looking different. Your body is something, but your face is different. Your walk is the same, but your face is different. Your voice is the same, but your face is different. There is this beauty of God on Moses. So this guy, only he knew the truth. You know what's the truth? The glory that was shining upon him is a transitory. In another word, it's a fading glory. The eternal glory is coming. Um, under which we, you and I are living. The, the uh, law is a shadow of what is to come. Old covenant is a shadow of what is to come. It is a temporary example of the permanent revelation that is going to come. You and I are in the permanent glory. Never changing, everlasting glory. But the glory that was on Moses' face, the Bible says it's a fading glory. These guys freaked. Who freed? The children of Israel. So this guy put a veil. Only he knew the truth. It's going to go down. Monday, Sunday he went to church. You know, beautifully became. So Sunday evening, it 90% from 100% to 90% it came down. And Tuesday it came down by 75%. Thursday it went down by 50%. Saturday, bling, 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 bling. It's in danger level again. So Sunday morning, the glory increases. And Saturday evening, it's, it's depleting. You know, that's the thing. So this fellow thought, okay, I cannot show this to these people. Let me put a veil over my face. And when he put a veil over his face, he will be reading the commandments. You know, this is what God is saying. All the Ten Commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not, you know, all those things he'll be reading. So, he was actually doing it. So, the fading glory will not, the, the secret of the fading glory will not be revealed to these people. But these people, what they did, the minute you put a veil, they will read, thou shall not 
Thou shall not, thou shall not. But they never understood what it is. He put a veil over his face, but the Bible says a veil came over their hearts. He put a veil over his face, but a veil came over his, over their hearts. In another word, they just couldn't understand what God was communicating. Their minds just couldn't process what God was communicating with them. So God thought, you know, if I need to make them like me in this world, I need to change their receptors. You get it? I need to change their understanding capabilities. I need to change their receptive capabilities. So he said. That's why we read in Bible. If anyone says where this is written, I'll give you a small gift. I have taken a heart of cold stone and given you a heart of flesh. Who wrote this? Anyone? No Google, nothing. Who wrote this? Gone? No? You don't know? I'll tell you. Okay, I'm going to give myself. Ezekiel, he wrote this, you know, he said, God is going to take the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Do you get it? So, there was a change in the inside. He took the heart of stone. Can stone understand anything? You know, in Tamil we used to say, if anyone doesn't listen properly, they'll say, Kallu meri eh? Sitting like on stone. That means, whatever we speak, it's bouncing back. That's the veiling of the heart. God said, I need to unveil them. I need to change their heart. So, even if I whisper, they will understand. Even if I think, they will understand. Even if I'm dreaming, they will understand. If I purpose something, they will be so sensitive. They will understand what cross wanted to accomplish is this. God wanted to do a heart surgery so you can have an understanding heart. I've said this in the church. Now I'll say this again to you. Okay. Jesus is saying all the parables. The sower. The parable of the sower. You know, all these parables. And why do you think Jesus spoke in parables? I've said this in the church already. Why do you think Jesus spoke in parables? Why do people say stories? Yeah, relate to it, right? But... That's why Jesus, but, you know, Jesus is saying the parable of the sower. He's sowing all of that, right? All the, you know the parable? Sower? Okay. Now, the disciples are coming and asking him, Sir, we are not understanding. They are not understanding. Why you want to say the parables? You know, we always thought Jesus wanted to simplify the kingdom principles, right? You go home and read. Jesus spoke those parables and these disciples are coming and asking this. Jesus, why are you speaking in parables? Jesus is saying, and this is exactly what they are saying. They are not understanding. We are with you. Okay, leave them. We are with you for this three and a half years. We are, we are not understanding why. I will show it to you why. Okay, turn your Bibles with me to Matthew 13. We will read 13. Uh, 10 onwards. It says, The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? In another word, they are not understanding. We are also not understanding. Look at what Jesus is saying. Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. And then, uh, Read verse 13. It says, Matthew 13, 13, it says, This is why I speak to them in parables, 
Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will ever be hearing, but never understanding. You will ever be seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. He's saying, you know what? They hear but they are not able to understand. Why? They are seeing but they are not able to perceive. Why? Because there is a veil on their heart. That's why parables also didn't make sense to them. Jesus is saying, my father and I are one. That didn't make sense to them. Okay. What I see my father do, I do. It didn't make sense to them. Now he is saying, he is talking to them in stories. It didn't make sense to them. Nothing made sense to them. Why? A veil. God said, okay, I need to tear the veil. So, this unveiling, when I say, you are having an unveiled face, you know what does it mean? Your heart can understand now. Your heart can understand the love of God. Your heart can understand, you know, the provisions of God. Your heart can understand the wisdom. Your heart can understand the favor. Your heart can understand righteousness. Your heart can understand the sanctification that is available for you. Your heart can understand the privileges of being sons and daughters of God. Your blessing is not based on your efforts. Your blessing is based on Christ's effort on the cross of Calvary. Unveiling of the heart. You understand? You understand God's love so much that any time when you go through, when the devil whispers, Oh, you have done this wrong. You have done that wrong. You know, that's why God is against you. You can stand boldly and say, I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. You know, my God and I are one. His love is unconditional for me. I know I'm not going to be punished by for what I do, but I'll be blessed for what is done on the cross. So if I say all of this, no, some people tell me, not you, outside, you are giving people license to sin. No, I am not giving license to sin. It is your choice. You do whatever you want. I am talking about my God. <laughs> you want, you go sin. Don't blame me. I am talking about my God, the goodness of my God. You want to misuse it and come back again? It's fine. Do it. Don't blame me. I am talking about who my God is. I am talking about the goodness of God. And even if you fail, you know what I want you to do is not sit there in where you fail, but run back to the goodness of God. You are, you are given limitless access. Do you get it? Unveiled face. Come back. Come back. Unveiled face. So the devil will stop you from understanding your, your limitless access. But now, God has unveiled your heart to know you can come in any time. 12 o'clock in the night, you can come. Early in the morning, you can come. Middle of the day, you can come. 9 o'clock in the morning, you can come. When you are sick, when, 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 when you think you have given up on God and suddenly you remember, just like the prodigal son, you know, my, in my father's house, there was more than enough for my servants. Like that, when you think about God, you can come back again. Because you have limitless access. So, the unveiling means God is changing the way your heart perceives His love for you. God giving you the ability to understand. You know, that's why we read in the Bible, people perish because of the lack of understanding. You know what the devil has done today? I'll tell you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he is blinded the mind of the unbelievers. That means, it's not that your uh, heart has eyes. Already we have eyes. Heart has eyes? No. The ability to see the way God sees you and understand. 
That's talking about the eyes of your heart. You know, if God has to come down and look at you, you know how we will look at you. Look at my pretty child. Look at my pretty daughter. That's how he will look at you. He will look at Joel and say, look at my handsome boy. He will look at Tony and he will tell Pavitra, look at the handsome Tony I have created. That's how. You know, God wants you to understand him. That's the unveiling of the heart. They didn't understand. You know, I'll tell you one instance. Okay. Uh, the children of Israel were you know, going through the land of the Moabites and the Edomites. And they are bringing a prophet, a, 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 a sorcerer, to come and cast a spell on the children of Israel. And he is going and trying to open his mouth to cast a spell of curse on the children of Israel. He is opening his mouth to cast a spell. This is what he intended to say. You know, you will rot in Corona, you will die in this, you will die in that, you will this and you will blah, you will blah. You know, he wanted to say, and this is what it came out of his mouth. When God wants to bless Israel, who can stop him? That is God. You know, you might be sitting here wondering, why is all of this happening in your life? You know what? I'll tell you something. What the enemy intends for evil. He will turn it for good. That is God's heart for you. And I will also tell you this. He will work everything together for good. You may not understand what you are going through now. But I will tell you. Because you understand that you have an unveiled face. That means your heart is not calloused to the whispers of God. How many of you want to hear the whispers of God? And if God has to come down and whisper, you know what he'll whisper? I love you, my child. You are very precious to me. I understand the pain that you're going through. I understand the cries of your heart. Can you just trust me? That's what he'll whisper. He won't come and say, Renika, do this. Do that. Follow my footsteps. Come after me. He's not going to put all those conditions. He's going to say, Can you just trust me? Can you give your hands into mine and just trust me blindly? I will take care of you. If you can understand that, that's the unveiling of the heart. That's what cross has accomplished for us. You have been given the ability to understand Father's whisper. Amen. And I'll tell you, all the parents who are sitting here, if you are wondering about the future of your children, you know what father will be whispering? If you earthly fathers know how to do good for your children, I am their grandfather now. I will know how to do much more. I've been a father for generations. I've been a father to Joseph when he was in the prison. I've been a father to Abraham when he was beyond his age. I've been a father to Moses when he was struggling to speak. I've been a father to Daniel when he was sitting in the lion's den. I've been a father when Sedrak, Meshach, Abednego went through the pits of fire. I've been a father to Paul and Silas when they were sitting in the prison walls and crying and worshipping. I've been a father to them. I brought them out. I'll be a father to you. I'll be a father to your children and your children's children. Whispers of my father for you. Unveiled face. Unveiled face. You know, if there's anything I want you to take away from this morning as you're celebrating cross, Good Friday is this. I have been given the ability to understand the whispers of my father. 
unlimited access no more limitations amen